Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Hollywood show up here. About to give you another Mortal Kombat X video. In this video, we talk about understanding your team synergy as well as some teams that can work really well. Now, as we know, there are a lot of cool combinations in Mortal Kombat X, and there are some that are really difficult to pull off. Now, keep in mind, you can mix match certain classes with each other, like Raiden kind of has to. Assassin Katana has that bleeding on tag in. Possessed Kenshi has that burn damage on tag in. There's some other cool combos out there where you can get away with not maximizing synergy. For example, Shaolin Master Kung Lao. All bronze teammates receive 300% attack, health, toughness, and recovery. Now, who is this going to benefit the most? Probably Ninja Mime Johnny Cage along with Monk, who has one of the best passives in the game because getting between two to three bars is a huge pain in the ass, and Monk really pulls it off. But if Monk is 300% harder to kill, it's basically like having a silver card on your team and not a bronze card. Now this was originally brought up by Injustice Gods Among Us as Dark Side has this passive, but of course they don't have toughness or recovery in that game, so it's a really cool feature. And Kung Lao has really good stats, as you see. 1100 recovery, 1050 attack, just an all-around great card. Next up we have Covert Ops Cassie Cage, who probably has the best passive in the game. All Spec Ops teammates have a 25% chance of unblockable attacks. Now this also includes special moves, not just basic attacks, so this is really powerful. And if you throw on Quan Chi with Cassie Cage and then throw on somebody else that gives Spec Ops one bar of power, you have a ridiculous team right there. So Cassie Cage, probably one of the best cards in the game that I don't Katana. have. And Assass Assassin Katana really works well with Mournful Katana and one of the Kotel Khans that gives 30% attack as Anything that basically generates power or attack is great for Katana. You can also throw Raiden in there to soften a person up. And Raiden is an extremely fast attacker. And then you can follow up with Katana and just power drain the hell out of him. Tag back in Raiden, get off his level 2 and power drain as well. There's some really cool combination to pull off with that. And obviously Quan Chi is a high health card. Probably the highest in the game. He's got really good toughness and recovery. He's basically the tank of the game, but his attack really isn't that bad at 950. His passive is really strong. It can also work twice with Grandmaster Sub-Zero, so that's really cool. Now we're going to talk about cards that I don't actually own, that I can actually go in the thing Kenshi. without upgrading. Possessed Kenshi Ambush sets the opponent on fire, and that actually lasts for a long time. And keep in mind, Injustice Scorpion actually does more damage when the opponent is on fire. So Possess Kenshi along with Injustice Scorpion is really powerful. And there's some other cards that do fire, like Liu Kang's level 2 move also does fire, so you can really benefit from that as well. And Liu Kang also has that tag in synergy too. Yeah. Master of Souls Ermac starts with one bar of power for each outworld teammate. This is probably one of the most overpowered broken passives in the game, especially if you put in Mournful Katana as all the cards will start off with one bar of power, so those two alone would get Ermac at three bars. And then you could throw somebody in like Raiden for harassment damage. That way you can basically soften somebody up. Like say they have a person in there, they can just soften them up, and if the X-Ray doesn't get them, something else will. One of the most broken passives in the game. Hat Trick Kung Lao, all martial artist teammates deal 50% critical damage and Kung Lao has an additional 25% critical chance. So that's really cool. And that also makes the sword extremely useful. And with fast attackers like Liu Kang, you could really benefit from that. There's also some level two moves that do some really good stuff. Like I know that the spec ops have a lot of critical chance in there. I believe that Kung Jin also increases critical chance, the silver. So you could really get some benefit from him. Sun God Kotel Khan is the attack boost for outworld teammates. So if you throw Ermac along with Mournful Katana on the team, or even Assassin, you can pull off some great stuff. Although, Mournful Katana is probably better because of the double power drain. Bo Jitsu Kung Jin is really interesting because he gains power when blocking attacks. Now, that also makes it pretty easy to get up to three bars just by blocking. As special moves that get blocked also, or even if you take special moves, you generate about as much power as if you take a hit, if not more, especially when you're at two bars. Fairly mediocre card, but it's 
It's also got one of those interesting passives that are pretty cool. Devora. Next up, we have Venomous Devora. Devora's basic attacks do 100% damage per negative effect on the opponent. Now, this is where you can really benefit from Assassin Katana and Possess Kenshi. And then you have your own poison abilities that can do some damage as well. The Poison of Vivid Rush is a good example of that. You can have 300% damage from that. So if you have all three on the opponent, 300% extra damage. And obviously, if you have the abilities upgraded, you can keep that in for quite a while. Next up, we have Cryomancer Sub-Zero, who gives extra health for martial artist teammates. And this is what makes Grandmaster Sub-Zero a tank. Also works pretty good on Infernal Scorpion, as it will also give him health. And with the additional damage on tag ends, you want to keep him alive. Unfortunately, Cryomancer Sub-Zero stats are pretty mediocre, but obviously with the 30% health, he is one of the higher health cards because of that. Next up, we have A-list Johnny Cage. 30% health for Spec Ops teammates, and this is what really helps out Covert Ops Cassie Cage go from kind of mediocre health to a tank. So A-list Johnny Cage is decent in that role as well. Next up, we have Demolition Sonya Blade, who gives 30% attack for Spec Ops teammates. So putting in the Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, Cassie Cage, you got all of your health and attack boost, and then Cassie Cage, 20% unblockable or 25%, that is really powerful, having all three of them together. Even if you just use Cassie Cage primarily. Blood God Coltel Khan summons a random totem that generates extra damage, healing, or power. And I really think this card is pretty bad. His level 1 move I haven't found really that useful. It might actually be better when you upgrade the special. The totem could also be useful. I don't no, because I don't actually have that card. Devora. Swarm Queen Devora, I do have on Android, but I don't have on iOS. Can inflict multiple effects on the opponent and immune to poison. That can be very important when you're dealing with Reptile, as it could block out the damage completely. The level 2 move is Vortex Swarm, and that causes the random effects, and that could also work good with the other Devora. So having resistance gear with Swarm Queen Devora can be really good. Next up we have Noxious Reptile, which you can get out of card packs. The entire team's bleed and poison damage increased by 30%. So by using Noxious Reptile with Assassin Katana, or even with Devora, can suddenly make a mediocre card really powerful, as when you multiply the attack of certain abilities, that really scales up quite a bit. So that 670 attack is a lot more, as a lot of the abilities from Reptile are offensive poison based and leave a really good damage over time. So don't underestimate Reptile stats just like don't underestimate Jackie Briggs. Because Jackie Briggs can do a lot of damage. Johnny and Cage. finally, out of the gold cards I do not own, Stunt Double Johnny Cage. Stunt Double attacks on tag in stunning the opponent. The reason this is actually a really good passive is the fact that on a lot of multiplayer matchups, the problem is when the opponent has two bars and then ends up overwhelming you if you can't do enough damage, as multiplayer usually likes to put you in unfair matchups. Well, Stun Double Johnny Cage guarantees the stun. That way you can get off a cracker. If you have two bars of power, you can get off a double cracker, get rid of about a bar of power, and then tag in, say, Katana or somebody else that can power drain. So Stun Double Johnny Cage's stats might seem really bad, but his passive is pretty good. Now we're going to go into our collection. We're actually going to go into a battle so we can edit teams and show off some really good team combinations. So we're going to sort by attack. And obviously, Sergeant is the worst card in the game, in my opinion. So we're going to start off by showing the lower cards. And Sergeant, in my opinion, is probably the worst bronze card in the game. Sarian and Ani are the best, other than Monk's passive, because they can do a lot of damage on their level 1 moves, which are the Spit, and I believe that Ani has a Burn ability. So when you're using bronze and silver cards, Ani, Monk, and Sarian are probably your best three. Now in the silver category, there are some interesting ones in there. We're going to go filter by silver. And only show silver cards in the time being. So as we know, Kenshi is probably one of the best silver cards in the game. And he's also got that hybrid special ops and martial artist synergy. So if you throw on 
15% attack with Martial Artist, meaning if you put Scorpion on your team. So you got Kenshi, you've got Scorpion, and keep in mind Kenshi benefits from both sides. So yes. Jack Briggs also gives 15% toughness for Spec Ops teammates. And Cassie Cage has that personal buff with Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade, so that really is the best way to use them. Yes. And Farmer Jack Briggs is 30% recovery for Spec Ops teammates. That's a stat you don't want Jackie to overlook. Briggs. And Jackie Briggs' ability is 100% more damage and stuns. And I think that's pretty much it. So if you want to get 15% attack, I think you have to do it from Sonya Blade. Yes. And I think Johnny Cage is 15% health. So if you want to get the most attack out of Kenchi, 70% attack using Sonya Blade and Scorpion. Although with the Cassie Cage, Johnny Cage synergy, Cassie you Cage. really want to do that. As that's pretty much 50% as 65% attack and health with Cassie Cage. In other words, go fight go use Jack's Briggs with Kenchi. And Scorpion is the best way to use it. So that is actually the best way to use silver. Kenchi, in my opinion. You can also throw Ermac in with Kenchi and Jax Briggs as Ermac absorbs toughness and Jax Briggs yes. also is the only card, I believe, that gives toughness to Spec Ops teammates and Jax Briggs has the toughness of a gold card as it has 800 base, so he really benefits from toughness the most. And Ermac, when an opponent <laughs> dies, gain 40% of the health the attack and toughness once per match. So this is probably one of the better silver teams. You can also throw Scorpion in there if you're really worried about dying. That way you can buff Ermac up. Or if you're going for pure attack, Scorpion wins. And you can also throw in Kung Jin along with Kenshi if you're going Kenshi. offensive and just don't care about the Spec Ops. Although I think Spec Ops gives Kenshi. the attack. Or no, Spec Ops gives the health. So if you want to go for pure damage, this is probably the best Kung route Jin. as Kung Jin gives critical chance for all martial artist teammates. And obviously if you have uh, Bus, the Kung Lao card that's not a combat pack exclusive, you got a lot of critical hit chance. I believe it's 55% with him. So Kenchi can put out the paint. Classic Katana is a really Kenshi. good card as she has a 5 hit light combo. 30% recovery for outworld teammates. And Ermac is also a really solid card for Outworld. And as far as the other Outworld cards, I recommend either Reptile or Devora as those status effects. And Reptile being able to do poison damage. And the poison damage as of the latest patch actually works while the opponent is tagged out as well. So you cannot hide like an Injustice Gods Among Us. If the Ibisic procs and you tag out right away, you're still going to take damage, so it's not worth doing that. So that's a synergy with Special Ops, Martial Artists, and also with Reptile. Outworld, as Reptile gives 15% health. Devora. And Devora gives basically her own passive ability. I think it's Coltel Khan oh that gives 15% attack. Yes, it is. So that's basically the synergy you would use for Silver Cards. So the bad silver cards, in my opinion, I think Sub-Zero gives health to Martial Artists. I think 15%. I don't really care for Kano either. And 30% attack if the opponent has 40% or lower health. That really doesn't benefit anybody. So in my opinion, Sub-Zero, Kano, Jackie Briggs is definitely underrated as Jackie Briggs can be a really powerful card. Farmer Jack Briggs has that power drain on the level 2 ability, so... Farmer Jack Briggs isn't that bad. The worst two silver, in my opinion, are Kano and Sub-Zero, although Devora is pretty bad as well. That's probably the worst three, in my opinion. So now we're going to gold cards instead of silver. So we have quite a few gold cards. I haven't really tested out Nimble Reptile. Shaolin Kung Jin, in my opinion, isn't one of the greatest, although all martial artists teammates start with one bar of power that can be really good with double scorpion as you can pretty much throw off spears right away so not a bad team at all and this team actually is pretty solid because you have two people spear comboing there's probably no way you're going to lose and starting with that extra bar of power makes it even more devastating and 
The mini aim grab from Infernal Scorpion is really good. So you can also throw in Grandmaster Sub-Zero instead of Shaolin Kung Jin and you have a tank. And if you have Cryomancer Sub-Zero in there instead of Ninjutsu Scorpion, you lose 30% attack, but you would gain 30% health. Or you could just throw in Cryomancer Sub-Zero with those cards and gain synergy. Now the very important thing to note is that Infernal Scorpion also synergizes with another one. So Revenant Jax Briggs and Revenant Sub-Zero are actually the better choices to use. Because Revenant Sub-Zero gives 12% attack for every nether realm card on the team and jack yes. briggs gives 12 percent or 15 percent health so if you don't have infernal scorpion if you didn't buy the starter pack of them you're going to have quan chi in the quan revenant chi. pack or if you got him out of a combat pack he is not technically a combat pack exclusive now quan chi's passive is really interesting because it revives a dead teammate with 25 percent health and you really want that to land on Sub-Zero, not with Jax, even though Jax has a lot more health than Sub-Zero, as you can see right there. 63-66 instead of 49-03, but Sub-Zero does have a little bit more attack, and he's got the better abilities. I think it's better landing on Sub-Zero. And Assassin Katana, Mournful Katana, with the Ermac that I mentioned. I think it's Spectral Ermac. Actually, no, it's the other Ermac. It's actually one of the better combos in the game. But you can also use Ermac. When a teammate is defeated, gain 50% of their attack and toughness. But really, Spectral Ermac probably works best when you're using Quan Chi and something else that buffs attack. Although buff and attack on Quan Chi would mean you have to use Revenant Sub-Zero and you don't have that synergy with the health. Although Ermac doesn't benefit from health, you only gain attack and toughness. So this is how you could get the most out of Spectral Ermac. So if Quan Chi goes down, you're going to get a ridiculous amount of stats, and you could really have Revenant Sub-Zero get revived. It's a pretty good way to use Spectral Ermac. It's not the most effective way, but it's a pretty cool one. Next, we have Flaming Fist Liu Kang, along with Thunder God Raiden. And then you have Infernal Scorpion. So you have basically a team that does everything on Tagging. You got more damage Liu and Kang. burning. You got basic damage and critical chance for five seconds. This also synergizes excellently with Kung, Kung Lao. And also if you have the silver Kung Jin, you got a lot of critical hit chance on Liu Kang. Although then you tag in Liu Kang, you tag in Infernal Scorpion for more damage. And then you put in Thunder God Red and you don't have him in first. You want to tag him in. Do a couple hits and then get in either Liu Kang or Scorpion. It's a really fun team. And if you don't want to use Infernal Scorpion, say you're using him in the Netherrealm team, then you would put in Assassin Katana, giving you two power drains, and basically everybody does something on the target. Now, Flaming Fist, Liu Kang, and Infernal Scorpion actually work really well together because Scorpion can combo into a stun, and then Liu Kang can come in and beat the hell out of it. So a really good team there, and Injustice Scorpion can also work well with Flaming Fist Liu Kang because his level 2 move, the Windmill Punch, has a burn effect on it. So you got the 25% damage as Injustice Scorpion has 25% damage versus opponents on fire. You can also use Possess Kenshi to set opponents on fire, and that lasts a really, really long time. Kenshi. Balance Kenshi is really fun because all Spec Ops teammates start with one bar of power. So if you throw that on with Covert Ops Cassie Cage and the Special Ops card that gives 30% attack, which I don't think I actually have, that is a really solid team. Power Drains are really strong in Mortal Kombat, so you really want to have something that gives you a bar of power, and Balance Kenshi does a great job of that. You can also throw Possessed Kenshi in there to give you that fire effect. And also a second power drainer. So having all Kenshi's on your team is really powerful and really useful. Kano. And Commando Kano is probably the worst. Well, actually, no, it's Cutthroat Kano that's the worst. This KO gains 25% critical chance and immune to blind. So it's not really a useful ability, but it's pretty cool anyways. And Tactical Sonya Blade also has that Spec Ops synergy, so... 
Like, I would use him with ballot, her with Balance Kenshi, and I really don't like the drone. It doesn't really do much damage. So I haven't really leveled her up. And Nimble Good Reptile time. also gives 30% health for Outworld teammates, and he also has the uh, personal buff, which is a speed increase. That's actually pretty fun to use. It'll make him feel like Liu Kang. And as we know, opponents don't really have a good chance of blocking. So if you like this video, showing off all of the gold cards in Mortal Kombat X, as well as understanding your team synergy with silver and gold cards, please give this video a like rating, comment, subscribe, share this video amongst your friends, and as a favorite, check out my other Mortal Kombat X videos, my playlist, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, which are all highly channel. And have a wonderful day, kids. Subscribe, bitches!